Greetings and welcome to another lecture in Introductory Psychology. This one involves schedules of reinforcement and how often that a reinforcer is given can affect the actual conditioning that goes on. Now, in terms of schedules of reinforcement, this is probably also true for, for punishment as well, but we generally talk about it in terms of reinforcement. When you're training up a behavior, when you're trying to get a behavior to occur, Generally, the best way to do this, of course, is to reinforce the behavior every time it occurs. So whenever the individual does the behavior you want, then you're going to need to reinforce it. This is called continuous reinforcement for obvious reasons. I mean, it's reinforcement and it's continuous. Now, the problem with re continuous reinforcement is, while you can learn things very, very, very quickly, you can also unlearn things very, very, very quickly. For instance, Let's say that you're employed and every hour that you work, someone comes and pays you your hour's salary. Okay, pays you the salary for that hour. Every hour at the top of the hour, you get paid how many dollars an hour you're making. Well, first of all, that'd be pretty cool. And you'd probably wind up going to work and working very quickly and working a lot because you're getting paid right there. But what would happen if you stopped getting paid? the odds are you would almost instantly stop working. And that's the problem with continuous reinforcement, is it gets learned very quickly, but it also extinguishes very quickly. It goes away just as quickly. So why is it then that we all manage to still do things even though we're not being reinforced for them all the time? That's because instead of continuous reinforcement, eventually our behavior gets switched over to what's called partial reinforcement. Now partial reinforcement means that not every behavior is reinforced. Not every time you do that particular behavior do you get reinforcement. So maybe you would get reinforced for that behavior every five times or every ten times or every every day or every week or every two weeks. Most of us get paid on a two-week schedule. Some of us get paid on a monthly schedule. So we may work for a month but we have to wait to the end of the month to get reinforced for it and yet we put up with it. Okay. And they found that with partial reinforcement, that extinction can actually be put off for quite a while, simply because the individual has come to realize that not every time they're going to get reinforced, and maybe next time they'll get reinforced. Okay, maybe next time. Okay, maybe the time after that. Or it's coming up to the time I'm going to get reinforced, this is great sort of thing. Now, this resistance to extinction of behaviors that are trained under partial reinforcement is called the partial reinforcement effect. Once you switch an individual from continuous reinforcement to partial reinforcement, you can be fairly certain that that behavior is going to stick around a whole lot longer once you stop reinforcing it. Now you do have to reinforce it every now and again. It's not like you can let a behavior go on forever without ever getting reinforced because eventually it will extinguish. You know, if, if you stopped getting paid, period, you might work for a week or two or three after your last pay, thinking, well, I'll get paid next time. You know, I'll get paid. They'll pay us at the end of this week, I'm sure. But eventually, you're going to lose confidence. You're going to stop working or you're going to run out of money. So the same with partial reinforcement, you can get extinction. It just might take longer. And unfortunately, this is not only true for behaviors we like, but for behaviors we don't like. Children, for instance, who have a tendency to throw tantrums or whine or scream for things that they want, often find that most of the time they don't get anything. But every now and again, the parents, because they've had a bad day or because they're tired or they simply can't stand it anymore, will give in. And so what happens when parents give in every now and again is the child is going to just be screaming and wailing and yelling and throwing tantrums up until they are adults and possibly afterwards. So the trick basically to get rid of that, there's two tricks. The first trick is to, it's not a trick, the first technique is to never, ever, 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 ever give in, which is very difficult. But if you want sort of, well, this one is kind of a trick. You could also try something else. Sometimes people get rid of behaviors they don't want by reinforcing them. Continuously reinforce a behavior for a while, whether it's in a dog or a child or an adult. And you may find that after continuous reinforcement for a while, when you stop reinforcing it, the behavior will also stop relatively quickly. 
because it used to work. It used to get all the time. It used to get all the time. This is great all the time. Now I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. This this sucks. I'm going to go away now. It really does work. It's a bit painful and it's a bit annoying, but that is probably a better way because otherwise you run into partial reinforcement by giving in every now and again and it just it it's hard to get rid of. Ask any parent. So when we're talking about partial reinforcement in terms of actual schedules, of course, we have a lovely pattern. The nice thing about all of these patterns in this chapter, whether we're talking about classical conditioning or reinforcement versus punishment or schedules of partial reinforcement, is they all tend to follow the same pattern. In other words, you break them down, they tell you exactly what they are. And these schedules of partial reinforcement are exactly the same. Now the first type of partial reinforcement schedules I'm going to talk about are called ratio schedules. R-A-T-I-O, ratio schedules. Now ratio schedules deal with the number of behaviors that are done before reinforcement. They deal with number of behaviors, not time. Time is not a variable here. It's number of behaviors. And first of all, we have what's called a fixed ratio schedule or an FR schedule. Now, when something is fixed, it's, you know, it's not moving. In the case of animals, they're not reproducing. But you know, when, you, when you fix something, it's, just, it's not moving. So a fixed ratio schedule always stays the same. If we put a rat on a fixed ratio five lever presses schedule, it has to press a lever five times to get reinforcement, it's always five times. Never four, never six, never nine, never two, it's always five. And the rat will learn very quickly how that works. They will sit there and go, one, two, three, four, five, and then they'll eat the food. One, two, three, four, five, and eat. They don't go, one, two, doo 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 three, doo boop, four, five, food. No, it's bang, 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 bang. Food, 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 and then they get it. They learn that very, very quickly. And so do humans. It's actually kind of hard to come up with a fixed ratio schedule for humans. There are people that work on commission where, for instance, if you make five of these, we'll give you $10. If you make four, we're not going to give you anything. Or you have to complete one of these. For every complete one of these, you will get this much money. If you don't complete it, you don't get the money. That might be considered a fixed ratio schedule. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to complete that. It's if you complete it, you get the money. Some word processors, people used to have jobs, I did, used to have jobs typing up other people's papers. And I got paid by the page. I got paid by the full page. Okay, I had to complete a full page before I got the payment. So, it, but it's always fixed. It's always the same. On the other hand, we can also have ratio schedules dealing with number of behaviors that aren't always the same number. These are called variable ratio schedules or VR schedules they, because they vary. They change. Don't you love it when things are named exactly what they are? A variable ratio schedule means that you have to do a number of behaviors to get to the reinforcer, but you don't know what that number is because it changes. Now on average, for instance, we might have that lever pressing rat on a VR5 schedule. So on average, it might be five lever presses. But in reality, this time it might be two, next time it might be three, then it might be eight, then it might be 10, then it might be 12, then it might be five, then it might be six, then it might be one, then it might be four. You get the idea, okay? You can, the, the individual can never know how many behaviors they're going to have to do to get to that reinforcer. Now a human analog of this is slot machines. If you've ever played slot machines or watched people play slot machines, or for that matter, scratch off lottery tickets. Since most of you probably live in states in the US anyway where, where lottery tickets are probably legal. You know that if you scratch off enough lottery tickets, you're going to eventually win a jackpot. But you don't know how many lottery tickets you're gonna have to scratch off to get there. It might be this one, it might be two from now, it might be four from now, it might be the entire store's cash of them, okay? You might have to go through thousands of them before you hit the jackpot, but you never know, okay? And so sometimes I, I would used to go and watch people play slot machines because it was fascinating to me because 
they would just sit there and you don't have to even pull a lever anymore you just press a button they press a button press, if they want it didn't matter they just keep putting it back in the machine they keep putting it and if they ran out of money they'd be worried because they're thinking oh my god i only you know what if the next person comes and gets all of my money i have to keep playing it's part of the reason why those things are just diabolical in terms of keeping people before me because that's what you get you get that in people with slot machines you get that in rats pressing levers if the rat's on a variable ratio schedule, it will park itself next to that lever and just sit there and hit that lever constantly. The really good ones don't even stop to eat their food. They figured out a way to eat the food somehow while pressing the lever. They press it with their hind foot and stick their head in the hopper and you know eat the food as it comes down or whatever. Uh, so yeah, variable ratio schedules gets a lot of behaviors. And in Vegas and Atlantic City and places where people gamble, it gets people in a lot of financial trouble as well. Now, ratio schedules, as I said, involve number of behaviors, but we also have schedules that deal with the amount of time that passes. These are called interval schedules, and not surprisingly, we have one that's called a fixed interval. Now, fixed, of course, means that it's always the same. Interval means time passing. So what this means is the first behavior after a certain amount of time has passed will be reinforced. Okay, number of behaviors is not important here. With a fixed interval schedule, if you know what the interval is, you can get reinforced every single time you do the behavior. For an example here, I give you the postal service. In the US, we get mail delivery at least five times a week <laughs> and let's say for the sake of argument that it arrives at the same time every day let's say that it arrives at noon now if you're waiting for a very important letter perhaps with a check in it you could go check your mailbox 114 times between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. and you're not going to get anything okay but the first time you wait until after noon if they always come right at the stroke of noon the first time you check it after noon you get the letter you get the reinforcer or you can do what most people do and simply check it when they come home from work, which might be 5 or 6 o'clock if they work on the day shift. And the odds are by 5 o'clock at night, your mail is there. Bang, you get it. You don't have to check your mail 13,000 times a day. You simply wait. Wait the interval out. Do the behavior. Get what you want. Okay. By the way, rats learn how to do this as well. They do have a biological clock inside their heads. And what they do is they have some idea of time passing and they won't respond at first, but as it starts getting closer to where in their heads it tells them the time should be there, they'll start hitting that lever and hitting that lever and eventually they'll be sitting there usually and hitting it pretty good and they get the reinforcer once the time period is up and then they go take a nap. Three guesses as to what the last schedule of partial reinforcement is. You're right. It's a variable interval schedule. I love these things with patterns. It just makes them easy. With a variable interval schedule, the first behavior after a period of time passes will be reinforced, but you don't know what that period of time is. It could be one minute. It could be one day. It could be one week. You don't know. And what we see with rats on a variable interval schedule is they don't sit there and pound the lever because it could be an hour from now. They also don't ignore the lever for long periods of time because what if it's not an hour, what if it's 10 seconds? So what they will usually do is they will park themselves next to the lever and every certain amount of time they'll hit the lever just sort of see what happens. And the analogy for people would be if someone, for instance, is waiting for an important email. And let's say they don't have their phone with them and they can't get the notification that their email has come in, that they have to literally go in the computer and check their email account to see if they've gotten the mail. You're not going to sit there and check the damn thing every 10 seconds because it could come any time today. You know, you're going to get it before the end of the day. You could wait till the end of the day, but what if it came in the morning? You would have spent all that time without it. So what people generally do is they will check their email maybe every half an hour or every hour because it could come at any time, but they don't know exactly when. That's a variable interval. Now, as I said before, with the reinforcement versus punishment and such, the way to figure out what type of schedule of partial reinforcement you're looking at is to break it down. Is it a ratio or an interval schedule? If it mentions number of behaviors, and that's important, 
that's a ratio schedule. If it mentions time passing, that's an interval schedule. If the number is always the same from trial to trial, it's fixed. If the number varies from trial to trial, it's variable.